This thing has options for that. This cat's about to knock this right. There it went. It's on the floor now, cat. Okay, welcome to episode four of TDD and PONG. This is where we left off. We had, uh, we've got paddles, we've got walls, we've got a ball that bounces around. And in this episode, we are going to... We're going to go ahead and figure out how to move the paddles, uh, kill the ball uh, when it goes off screen, and reset everything and do some scoring. And we'll have a functioning game. It's not going to be the best, but we will have a functioning game, and it will be well tested. So, let's get started. Okay, in order to move the paddles, we're going to need a speed... We're going to need a move up and a move down method, which we are then going to wire into some keystrokes later. So let's get into the paddle and let's open test paddle. First things first is to add the accessor tests. It failed as we expected so then let's go back over here and we passed cool so now we're going to want to move the thing up and down based off of this speed so we've got to add a couple tests into things so let's go ahead and hop over to, nope, so let's go down here and we are going to need, so the way this is going to work is that when the main game runs, it's going to call move up and move down in the, uh, the process uh, function and it's going to send in the delta. So we just need to be able to move by a certain amount of delta based off our speed. So, function test move up. And let's go ahead and set the speed to 20. and move up we're going to give it half so this means that after we've moved we should have moved 10 because we're passing in a delta of 0.5 and our speed is 20. so let's go ahead and make an assertion based off of the paddle's y position Okay, now this is going to fail, right? Because this doesn't exist. Where'd it go? Ah, it hides that window. Okay, uh, move up doesn't exist, which we knew. So let's go back over to, let's give it a function of move up delta pass. Now let's run, and we failed. It didn't move. Okay. So now we implement this and position. Boom, we passed. All right, now we got to do the same for move down. I'm going to save us a step. You shouldn't do this but I'm gonna go ahead and save us a step and put that in there. Okay, let's go back over to test panel. And we're basically just gonna copy this. Say so move down, move down, um, plus 10. Let's make this 30, make it plus 15. Run this, and we failed. Of course, it didn't move. 
Let's go back to the paddle. Copy this. Make this a minus. No. Nope. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so we now have the ability to move our paddles up and down. Now we got to wire it up and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to wire everything up real quick. Actually, I noticed this. There we go. Now the message is good. Now we're going to wire everything up. We're going to wire the move up and move down to this. So let's go ahead and go into the project settings. Input map. Let's go ahead and add an action of P1 up, P1 down, and P2 up, and P2 down. Okay, and we're going to add a key. So P1 up is going to be A. You guys can do whatever you want here. P2 down is P1 down is going to be Z. This we're going to go with an up arrow. And this we're going to go with a key down arrow. There we go. Now we got the wiring. Now let's see. Now let's see if we can make it move. So let's hop over to the game. I've stubbed this out already. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. So here's the code. We are grabbing the paddles. Um, if we get out of this and go over to the game, we can see we got paddle one, paddle two. Hump back in here. We're going to call move up with delta. We're in the process delta. We got the P1 up, P1 down, P2 up, P2 down. And so now when we run this, they move extremely slow. Okay. Let's go ahead and set the speed for paddle. P1 paddle, set speed. Let's go to 300. Let's just ramp it right on up there. Set speed and run it. And yeah, up. Oh. Shoot. What is this? What's going on here is that uh, we are in the paddle ran into the wall and it's trying to bounce the wall that's that's bad all right we gotta fix that okay there is a number of different ways that we can deal with this situation um we can do it with code we can check what a thing is when it comes in and see if it's a thing that we expect it to be we can do it with collision layer mass there's there's a ton of different ways to solve it but the first thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and make a test so that we can watch this blow up and then whatever solution we decide we can uh we got a test that'll pass so we're gonna go ahead and make a new file and we're going to put this in test integration and we're going to call this test wall and paddle let's go ahead We're basically making sure that we don't blow up, so there's no good assertion here. So I'm just going to assert true, true, we got here. I still haven't found a nice way to handle these kinds of situations. Um, so before we do this, let's do a paddle dot set position. Um... Put you at a hundred over and a hundred down and let's put the wall right above you position two it's longer than it is 
tall, so we're just going to go with 80 and 80. All right. I'm going to do a little trick here, and this is called pause before teardown. And this will, this will allow the test to pause right at the end. And this, this way I can look to see if everything looks right. Um, let's get back over here into the test scene. And we had done a thing over here where we had said, the script to be test paddle, so I'm going to make this wall and paddle. Save that and now run and I paused. I don't see, I don't see our wall or our panel. Oh, that's because we've removed them first. Let's comment these out. And run it. Something's wrong. What's happening here? Oh! This should be scenes. They are colliding already. See, this is is why we make tests so let's go ahead and set your position at 200 okay there they are we can see that they are uh, they're close so let's make this uh, 150 that's close okay now I'll, we'll only have to move up a little bit so We've done that. Now let's just do a paddle. Dot move. Uh, let's set the speed equal to uh, 50. And then we're going to do a paddle. Dot move up. 1. So it looks like there's less than 50 in between those two. We should blow up right here. And let's see what happens. Yes, we blew up. Okay, so we're trying to get the direction. So we got a test. We got a we got a test and a thing that's failing. Let's get this out of here. Run this again, and it passed. But we just watched. Okay, so what happened here is we had the pause before teardown, which was actually a little bit of time for the engine to detect the collision and then blow up. But when we remove the pause before teardown, those things just go away and uh, the engine never gets a chance to do anything. So if we want this test to actually work, we have to put in a yield. And so this is going to allow the engine to go ahead and um, do its job and it'll process the collision and everything will blow up so we're just going to yield and we're going to use a built-in called yield uh, this is a gut built-in uh, yield four we're going to give it like a half second and then we use the constant yield which is the signal that gets fired from yield four so this should fail there we go okay now we're ready to fix the problem any way that we, any way that we want. Okay, so I just realized a little something. We don't even have to move up. We we had it. Everything was set already. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 160. And then I'm going to take this part out. We can put those guys back in and we should blow up. No, we didn't, because it wasn't there. No, this is going to have to be 100. Moved it down. There we go. Okay, now we're blowing up. So this is even a better test. We, we've got less moving parts. It just blows up. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to fix it with settings and not with code. Uh, I think just setting the collision masks should do it. So we're going to open up the paddle scene 
and we're going to change the mask to that. We've got the ball on this layer, so that should fix that. And let's open up the wall, and that should fix that. And let's run our test again. And it, nope, that's not our test. This is our test. And we pass. Perfect. Okay, so we should now be able to go back into the game, run the game, move things up and down, ball's still bouncing off everything the way it's supposed to. It takes off and it leaves, uh, but all of the parts appear to be in order. Wonderful. Okay, next step is we've got to stop that ball from taking off and we got a we got a score so we are going to make a, a kill box and that box will detect when the ball comes in and emit a simple signal that says that uh the the ball has gotten in there and the cat's making noise and climbing on the chair cool all right let's go ahead and make our new scene um we are going to make it an area 2D. We're going to call this kill box. We are going to add a shape. And we are going to make that shape a rectangle. Let's go ahead and make it a little bigger and save this to scenes kill box. Okay. Let's also give it a script. And we're going to put that in scripts kill box. Okay. And it does nothing there. We are going to... What are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and connect area entered. And we're going to... I have a signal of kill ball. And we are going to emit signal kill ball. And then we're going to go back over to the game. And we're going to add kill box. And we're going to call this P1 kill box and duplicate it as p2 kill box grab you put you over here grab you put you over here actually we're going to put it right here and right here and we're going to save this we're going to go back into the kill box and let's make you bigger okay there we go now we know we got that so we need to then connect the kill box. Let's not do that yet. We've got our kill boxes. Um, let's connect kill ball. And let's connect kill ball. And that gets us there. We are getting to the point now where the game is getting some functionality and we are going to have to start testing that. So we're going to have to make a test game now. And we will do that with a new script. We're going to put that in unit test game.gd. Let's go ahead and make that. And what else? Let's go ahead and make sure we can make a game. Okay, let's make sure we've got a test working. Let's go back over to test and change this to test game. Okay, we can make a game. And we've got our kill boxes, so let's get to work on making them work. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to test that when the ball 
enters the kill box that it gets placed back in the center of the screen and let's go ahead and start making that test when p1 kill box let's kill ball Boom. ball is recentered okay so we're gonna need a ball and I could do this but I don't want to I'm just gonna do get ball now that doesn't exist and we're gonna have to make it but no we don't have game we need a game for game Ball equals game dot get ball. And I could put a test on this, but this is a simple accessor, so we're gonna get ball return dollar sign ball. That just stops me from having to get node all the time. So let's go back into the here. And so what are we gonna do? get the original position okay so whenever the thing emits the signal we expect the ball to go back to where it started we run this. Set position. Oh, every time. And it failed because the ball did not move because we're not doing anything in there. Okay. So let's go back into the game. And we're just going to make Now this isn't going to get set in our current test because we're not adding the game as a child, which means ready never gets called. So we're going to go back into the game and we are going to add child game and remove child game run this and it fails accordingly go back into the game and then when it enters the p1 kill box we are going to say ball dot set position ball start position run this and it passes all right so now we should be able to go back to the game run the game move this up and there it goes cool we got to do the same thing to the other uh kill box now so let's get back in here test game and let's copy this when P2 kill box emit signal, ball goes back. So let's get the P2 kill box and run our tests. And P2 kill box fails, of course. Okay. So let's go back into the game. Put you in here. Run our test again. Everything passes. Go back to the game run the game move this up there it goes move this down there it goes perfect okay we can already start seeing here that this is going to get a little annoying that we are, we're going to have to make a game add it as a child remove it um and we're going to have a lot more tests that do that so we're going to refactor these tests right now and make a var game
So now we've got a, a game that gets re-instanced every time, and we don't have to worry about adding and removing it as a child, so we can get rid of these two lines. We can get rid of this line. We can do the same thing over here. And all we got to do is reference the right game now. And we should be able to now rerun our tests. Nope, something broke. Ah, of course. Instance. And everything passes. So, time to move on. Okay, so we've got the makings of a game now. And so, uh, we need to start keeping score. And in order to keep score, the game is going to have to have a get set score for each user let's go ahead and run these tests doesn't have the methods as we expect okay so i went ahead and added those real quick here's your p1 and your p2 we're starting them off at zero and we've got our accessors so now when we run the tests everything passes okay now we can get and set the score now we need to verify that the score increases whenever for player two whenever it hits the player one kill box and for player one whenever it hits the player two kill box That should do it. Run the tests, and it fails. Score is not going up. Okay, so let's go back in here, and on P1 kill box, then we are gonna say P2 score plus equals one. Run our tests again, and that passes. Let's get the other one in there real quick. That fails. Go back to the game. P1 score plus equals one. There we go. Now we're keeping score, uh, but we can't see it. So let's add the let's add the score to the screen next. We're gonna add a P1 and a P2 score label. Not there there. P1 score. So we need to start testing this GUI to make sure that we're seeing the score the way we expect to. So let's go back over to test game. Okay. And we need to now test score labels show score on start. got two failures yep and they say the right thing so game um, I think we're gonna be doing this a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and make a method called update display and this is going to And then in the ready, I'm going to update display. 
run the test everything passes cool let's go back over to test game and let's test when p1 scores then score is updated and we're going to grab these two things again and that's the p2 kill box so p1 gets a thing we're going to emit the signal and we're going to grab p1 score and expect it to be one run the tests that fails because it's zero perfect let's dupe this test for the other one p1 p2 run that again oh. and they both fail perfect let's go back into the game and we call update display and update display run it they pass all right we got the makings of a game we got a score we've got things that move let's watch it run all right get out of the way ah oh, look at p1 scoring up a storm ah oh, but p2 is catching up oh didn't quite make it and oh, p1's pulling ahead p2's catching up and it appears that this could just go on forever all right now we got to find a way to end the game let's do that before we do that let's do a little bit of cleanup um, because I, I really don't like how much these tests have to know about what's going on on the inside of the game this whole kill box thing really kind of bugs me so what i want to do to kind of make that a little easier to deal with later is i want to hide that away and a lot of times you don't want to make methods uh for your test but i think in this case it really helps because the implementation could change and then we're only really going to have to change it in one place so i'm going to make a function called uh p1 score and it's going to take in a game it's going to do game dot get node p1 p2 kill box dot emit signal kill ball and we're going to call this simulate p1 score and i am i'm having to take in a game because this could be useful in other places. I don't want it to assume to be using this underscore game. Uh, we should we should tell it. Um, I could default it. Ah, that's making it a little too little too smart. Okay, so now we can simulate the ball going out there, and then and later if we if we get rid of this things will be a little easier to deal with and we don't have all this kill box stuff going on we're gonna do a simulate this is a p2 score and this is a p1 score Now we don't have to remember that P2 means P1 gets a point and P1 means P2 gets a point. Uh, it reads better. Okay. So now we've kind of hidden away a little bit of this, this magic that we're doing inside of here. And uh, our tests themselves need to know a little bit less about the inner workings of the game class and if we make a change later it'll be a little easier to deal deal with okay let's find a way to end this game um, we are going to need to have a max score that we're trying to reach and it would be good if that was um settable so let's go back in here let's add another set of tests for
we don't have max score or set max getter set max score and then come up here and max score equals zero run our tests and that's right i set it to zero not 10 run our tests everything passes all right now we got a score to shoot for let's go ahead and try and make the game end so what should happen when the game ends i think it should just emit a signal to start off with so let's go to test game and we will say function test when p1 reaches max score game over emitted so we will do a game dot set max score. Let's set it to two. We'll do a simulate P1 score. We'll do that twice. And then we're gonna assert that a signal was emitted, which means that we have to watch signals game. Otherwise we won't detect it. And then we should be able to assert a signal emitted game game over let's run our tests and it failed because it does not have the signal game over perfect signal game over run it again and it failed because it did not emit the signal. Perfect. So now we got to go back into the game and we have to say here if P1 score max score emit signal game over man run the tests they pass all right now we got to make sure that player two can win and we're just going to repeat this as an extra measure we're going to make this three just to double and triple check some of the wiring run that three times run the test and yeah, it passed because we wrote a bad test because it should be P2 score. Copy, paste, and code. It's the best. Run it again. And yes, we did not get the signal. So let's go back over to the game. And down here, say if P2 score, max score, Emit signal, game over. Okay, so we're now emitting the signal. Um, the problem with this right now is we can we can watch if we go over to game. Let's default the max score to two um, and run the game. And I can go ahead and do this and. We've got a signal that was emitted, but the game doesn't really end. So the quickest way to do that would be, let's just assert, let's just test that when game ends, ball stops moving. So we are going to, we're going to do this. We don't need to watch the signal. I'm going to set the score to three. We're going to score three times. And then we are going to assert equal uh, game dot get ball dot speed is zero. And we ran the game, not the test. Let's run the tests. And something broke. What broke? Yeah, get speed. That's what we want. And, okay, so we broke a test because I changed that, which is good. Uh, but this is the test that we were looking for, actually. 
So let's go ahead and quit that. Let's go back up into the game. Catching a broken thing. That's what tests are all about. Let's go back in here and run it again. There we go. Just the 300. Okay. So in the game, we are doing... We are doing this, and so let's just do a ball dot set speed zero. We're gonna have to. Um, we were doing player two. Let's run this. All right, everything's green. The ball stops, but we know we're gonna have to test player one scoring now. But I think really what we need instead is just a function game over. And that is going to emit the signal. And that is going to stop the ball. This is better. So now we just do game over here. And we do game over here. And now when we run the tests, everything passes again. We can go ahead and quit this, play the game, run it, move this. You know what? I want this guy to win. And there we go. The score keeps going up, up. It's going to get to 10, and ball stops. We now got a game that ends. I mean, if you want to play it again, you got to quit it and restart it. Uh, but we've got a fully functioning game here. Um, oh, this is exciting.